Right now, the most urgent threat to our nations is ISIL. And that's why we're united in our determination to destroy it. And all 28 NATO allies are contributing to our coalition, whether it's striking ISIL targets in Syria and Iraq, or supporting the air campaign, or training local forces in Iraq, or providing critical humanitarian aid. And we continue to make progress, pushing ISIL back from territory that it controls. And just as I've approved additional support for Iraqi forces against ISIL, I've decided to increase U.S. support for local forces fighting ISIL in Syria. President Barack Obama, merely the latest in a long line of American leaders who have no concept of what it takes to win a war or even when to not get involved in one that will surely evoke memories of Vietnam and other conflicts, will be dispatching another 250 military advisors to Syria in hopes of bolstering the effort there and helping push back ISIS, ISIL, Daesh, the Islamic State, your choice for best descriptor. Bringing us right back to a set of questions if you wish to address. The first one. Why should we be convinced another 250 Americans will make a difference? And the follow-up, are we not just wasting our time in the lives of brave Americans? Let's get to work. With a reminder, your phone calls will be included in this segment of the show, and we will talk specifically about this subject and Syria. We'll see what you got in your bag. All right, first, welcome in defense analyst with the American Enterprise Institute to deal with the first part of that and more, Philip Lowhouse. Philip, thanks for joining us. And let me get right to the simple question here. 250 more American sets of boots on the ground. Is that really going to make a difference? No, I don't really think it will make much of a difference. I mean, look, it may in the, in the short term provide a little bit of a boost to our Kurdish allies and also to uh, the local, yet to be really identified well, local forces that the president mentioned in his speech. Um, however, this is really a drop in the, in the bucket in terms of what needs to be done to actually destroy ISIS, if that actually is what the goal is. Is there anything here that would make us believe, intelligent people who have a sense of history, that this is not just mission creep? just like we faced in Vietnam and other places, and we got involved in something that was simply not ready to attack well. Sure. I mean, I, it, I would call it mission creep if the president had originally defined the goal as being just to uh, try to help the Kurds or, you know, just to try to make things a little bit more stable. But his goal is to destroy ISIS. So, in fact, what we're really seeing is um, an incrementalism uh, with this president. He says, oh, well, we'll just send in 50 people and that will be enough. And then he realizes, oh, that's actually not enough. And then he sends in more people. So if he had listened to his advisors early on or to the military early on, he would have fully understood that that 50 people, 250 special operations forces are simply not going to be enough to destroy ISIS no matter what he does. He's saying more nations need to contribute to the U.S.-led air campaign that began in August 2014. He's going right to the Europeans and the British, saying don't leave the EU, you've got to get involved. All right, here comes another simple question. Why should we be convinced that they are going to? They, there's many people, many of these so-called allies, that still haven't shown a fighting backbone, if you will. Yeah, that's right. I mean, look, if right now we aren't have sending any of our troops into combat, at least so the president says. I mean, there are, there are reports every now and again of special operations forces doing direct mission action. But um, if the mission is just to advise and assist, there are Canadian and there are British special forces that are on the ground in, in Syria and also, I believe, in Iraq. Um, but I don't really foresee them taking any additional action without the U.S. taking additional action. And frankly, I think that's part of what the president is doing. I think he's posturing. Um, he's, he's basically saying, look, we're willing to commit more resources, so therefore, why don't you commit more resources? Which is kind of crazy when you think about it, given the very real consequences that Europe is, is, has been facing uh, with respect to ISIS in Brussels and Paris, etc. How do you think it's accepted from people like the Prime Minister of Britain and others when the President sits down and wags his finger at them and says, you need to do this and you need to do this and you need to run your government this way in order to defeat ISIS? i got to believe that looking at his track record, that's not going to go over very well. <laughs> Yeah, I, would, I think that's probably right. I mean, look, I think they're probably used to it by this point. Um, this president, of course, in the Jeffrey Goldberg interview not, re not too long ago um, in The Atlantic, some of your viewers may recall it, uh, mentioned that, you know, Europeans are free riders, essentially. And so uh, I think they're actually used to the president saying this. But the ironic thing is, is that, um, you know, he's asking them to do more, but yet we are not actually willing to do, to match the ends, uh, to match the means that we have at our disposal to the ends of destroying the Islamic State. So I think it's fair for, the, 
them to look at us and say, well, you're being a little bit hypocritical. Therein lies the rub, and the hypocritical side certainly does fit for the president. Philip Lowhouse, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. i got about 45 seconds left. James A. is on the line right now. All right, James, go for it. The president wants to put 250 more boots on the ground in Syria. You think it's going to make any difference? No, I think he ought to send airstrikes. Just keep sending airstrikes. Yeah, but we keep throwing in airstrikes here, and we keep asking everybody else in Europe to send in airstrikes, and they basically sit, they keep their jets on the ground. Why should we eat all this? Well, they just sit to uh, get American people, boys killed, send a few over at a time. Well, but that's the point. If we're getting Americans killed, why should we be doing it all, and the others aren't doing their fair share? I know that. I, I believe that. All right. You believe that, and so should a lot of people, too. That's the way this thing is being run. Thanks a lot for joining us, partner. We appreciate it. When we call for you, you see the numbers on the screen, one eight seven seven newsmax one eight seven seven six three nine seven six two nine. When we call on it, we got questions for you. you got to answer them up and be ready. The hard line continues.